I can't remember if it was a Connery or Moore Bond film that I saw first on the ABC Saturday or Sunday night movie, but I do know that Goldfinger was the first Bond film I ever owned on VHS. So when I found out that Playmobil was doing an official 007 set and it was based on Goldfinger, I had to give it a look. Remember a time when the good guys always won? And the bad guys were really bad. And sometimes the bad guys weren't even guys. I must be dreaming. Goldfinger. Next. Oh, that interesting car of yours. <laughs> I too have a new toy, but considerably more practical. Okay, first let's just get this out of the way right now because it's gonna make me sound like a broken record after all the Playmobil videos I've done about their vehicles that are based on licensed properties. The Aston Martin aesthetically, as it is, is perfect. The Aston Martin looks amazing. This is based on the DB5 from Goldfinger and it looks as a car on display just as great as all the other vehicles Playmobil has done. If you're putting that on display on a shelf, this car right here, as it is sitting next to me, it looks great. Great proportions, perfect, perfect application of silver paint. I couldn't find a blemish on it. It's really impressive. Chrome details on the bumpers and the wing mirrors. It just looks choice. I don't know how else to describe it. Even going so far as to have the officially licensed Aston Martin badges in all the proper places. So this isn't just a James Bond licensed toy. They also went ahead and got the Aston Martin license for this toy at the same time. And just like the DB5 from the film, the Playmobil version has every gadget that was in Goldfinger. It has the extending front and rear bumpers. It has the retracting bulletproof shield for the rear windscreen. All four wheels have retractable tire slashing mechanisms, just like in the movie. and it even has the machine guns that are hidden behind the front indicator lights. The only problem with the machine gun feature is that the indicator lights are not hinged, they actually pull off of the machine gun barrels, and they are very tiny pieces when you pull them off, so they are easily lost. I can already tell that if these were to fall on the carpet, given that they're transparent, they would be very hard to find. I'm very grateful that Playmobil bothered to add them into the engineering at all. I think it's a wonderful effort, but because the machine guns are so small and hard to see with the indicator light caps off, I'm just gonna leave them on there because I don't want them to get lost. Both the front and back license tags on this Aston Martin rotate just like in the film to give you three different identification numbers. Revolving number plates, naturally. Valid all countries. The only gadget on this car in the film that doesn't have anything on this toy to indicate that it's actually there, no pun intended, are the rear oil slick dispensers, which came out of the rear indicator lights. Unlike the machine guns in the front, the indicator lights at the rear of the DB5 do not come off to indicate any kind of oil slick gadget. The interior of the car is fully detailed, including the red button for the ejector seat, as well as Bond's dashboard tracking system. I think it would have been nice to have had a green LED to backlight that radar, but I understand that with the licensing for both Bond and Aston Martin on this vehicle, it probably wasn't possible to put that in and keep the car at a good price point. Disciplined Discipline. Like all Playmobil vehicles, the DB5 does not have opening doors, but it has a removable roof in two sections so that you can get the figures in and out easily. This is a tradition with Playmobil. At first it was a little weird for me when I was getting used to the Playmobil brand because I'm used to toy cars having opening doors when they're high class, but I'm actually starting to appreciate why they don't add hinge doors to these toys, because it reduces the amount of fail points, no broken hinges, and no lost doors. And now for those of you who are wondering, yes, this DB5 does replicate the show-stopping gadget from Goldfinger, the ejector seat. Ejector seat? You're joking. You activate this feature by pressing down on the rear exhaust pipes, and you have to press pretty hard straight down, down to the ground down to the pavement. And when you do, it launches the figure and the seat, just like in the movie, out of the roof. 
Because the roof is removable, you can replicate the actual sequence of events from Goldfinger as well if you wish, by removing the roof piece yourself before you launch the poor guy out of the car. There really is nothing disappointing about the car itself. Playmobil has done another bang-up job with a licensed vehicle for their range, and the DB5 is certainly one of the best I've seen. Now, in terms of the figures you get, you get four characters. First, we should look at Goldfinger, who's modeled after his appearance at the golf course, where Bond challenges him to a game and then distracts him with the Nazi gold. He comes in his golfing cap with all of the appropriate attire, and he comes with a pair of binoculars. I'm really struggling to figure out where those binoculars were used by Goldfinger in the movie, but I freely admit I may just be overlooking something. The only binoculars I remember being used in the film were in the hotel when Goldfinger was cheating at cards. And Goldfinger wasn't using them. They were being used by Sean Connery to watch him lose that card game. Next up, we have Odd Job. Odd Job looks pretty close to the way he did in the film. His hat is a little too concave on top. His hat should be more flat. I'm not sure why they chose to change that design, unless it was a found part that was already part of Playmobil's inventory, most likely. But overall, they've done a very admirable job recreating the look of Odd Job from Goldfinger. The most unexpected, impressive addition of this set is one of Goldfinger's random henchmen. This is one of the Asian henchmen that he employs in the film, and he is very detailed with his full blue jumpsuit, the yellow sash, and they even gave him, accurate to the film, removable white shoe spats. While I'm really impressed that Playmobil made this henchman figure, and that they gave him so much detail, I am a little disappointed that they didn't put one of the female characters from the movie in this set, because Bond is also about the women in the films, and I would have really liked to have seen an Honor Blackman character, or even Tilly Masterson, who is directly related to the chase from Goldfinger with the DB5. She would have been a great passenger seat character to go with Bond for this set. Lastly, we have James Bond himself. Now, he does have his Sean Connery eyebrow, and it does look like they gave him a kind of 60s-ish hairstyle, but I understand that Playmobil's characters, like Lego minifigures, have a certain amount of generic deco to them, so that's fine. What does irritate me a little bit about this Bond figure is that it seems like a layup, because it has nothing to do with Goldfinger beyond the Sean Connery eyebrow. That black tuxedo is only worn in Goldfinger when he's talking with M at dinner to set up the plan to connect with Goldfinger at the golf course. And that's what weirds me out about this, because Playmobil is usually very good at getting the details for these licensed properties correct. In this case, it seems like they did the James Bond figure a weak layup. Instead of giving him that very memorable 60s style gray suit, they just put him in a tux because James Bond wears a tuxedo. But in this movie, the tuxedo he did wear famously was in a white jacket at the beginning where he never had the car. In all the scenes where he's driving the DB5, he is never wearing a tuxedo. And so I feel like Playmobil must have found this tuxedo figurine from somewhere else and just put the body on him or something to save some money. Or maybe they just did the lame muggle attitude towards 007 and said, Bond is always visualized in a tuxedo, so even though it doesn't apply here, we're just gonna do that. At first, I thought he might have been recycling the body from the Spy series from Playmobil, where you had the spy with the Oakley-style sunglasses and the brown shoes, but when I compared those two figures, because thankfully Evander had sent me what I call the Spy Hunter car with that figure, they weren't the same outfit at all. The screen printing on the outfit was totally different. They might have made it purposely for this set, and if they did, that's extra disappointing, because it means that, for some strange reason, Playmobil totally missed this important detail with the main figurine. Incidentally, since we've brought up Playmobil's Spy series, just to give you a comparison, the Aston Martin DB5 is taller and longer than the Spy car from their previous set. Now, obviously, these two cars are from different eras. One's supposed to look more like a more modern Euro supercar, and the other one is a classic 60s saloon. But it is interesting to notice how much more toy you get with the DB5 than you did with the old Spy car. But back to the Bond figure, they really should have put that character in his gray three-piece suit from Goldfinger. That's what I visualize when I think of Goldfinger and the DB5, is him in that suit. And I don't know why they missed that detail or decided against it, 
but it really does feel like a glaring omission, which is unlike Playmobil to do. At the same time, they did not give Bond a gun, which is weird because Bond is famous for his Walther PPK, and Playmobil is not above providing guns for figurines for play sets. So it was weird that of all the sets, this set did not have a gun for James Bond. Thankfully, due to some of the donations from Evander and others, I had some spare actual Playmobil pistols, and so I put one with this James Bond. And even though he's in a tux right now until I can find a better body for him, the gun really helps add to the set and add to the authenticity of the Bond experience. Aside from everything I've said about the James Bond figure, overall this set is extremely nice, and the car is a show-stopping display piece. It's one of the highest quality toys I've seen in 2023. No matter where you set this thing up, I don't think it could be ignored. It's that nice. The chrome, the perfect silver paint, all the details on the interior. It's an amazing feat by Playmobil. I'm really happy to have this set. I cannot thank Scott Knudsen enough for surprise donating it to the channel like he did as a gift. I was blown away that he did that. He said in his message that he saw the Knight Rider in A-Team reviews and he just wanted to see my thoughts on the 007 set and he just surprised me with it. But given my track record with Playmobil, you might be asking why I hadn't already bought this for myself. The truth of the matter is, because I was hoping that they were going to then make a few more Bond cars and I could get my favorite Bond car from the series, which is the Living Daylight's Aston V8. Now, I know that's a tall order because we don't know if they're going to make any more Bond sets after this one, but I would give anything if they would do the Lotus Esprit from The Spy Who Loved Me and then the V8 Vantage from the Living Daylight's. I would buy those as well. But I was holding out because at the time I was like, well... If I'm gonna buy a Bond car, and these these sets are a little pricey because of their multiple licenses, I was gonna wait for the possibility of a Living Daylights car. I know, that is a long shot that's like, you know, picking lottery numbers, I get it, but that was where my head was. Um, so I'm so grateful to Scott for surprising me with this gift and allowing me to add it to my Playmobil collection when I was going to pass it over uh, on a Hail Mary wish. But can you blame me? I mean, it's Timothy Dalton. It's the V8 Vantage. It's one of the most gorgeous cars ever made by human hands. Um, but this is a great set, and I'm so glad it's now part of my Playmobil fleet, and I'm really looking forward to figuring out how to display all my Playmobil cars in the future. So thanks for watching this, everyone, and I'll see you on the next video.